Now, we have been working through the family. I don't know, Nathan, how many weeks? 82. 82. <laughs> wow, how time flies. Um, but we have covered a lot of ground. Okay? We're talking about the family. We started off with what God designed originally uh, with husbands and wives. We, we talked about how sin came in, corrupted all of that. Uh, we talked about how Christ came in and is, is the, with the Holy Spirit is turning our view back to what it should be. Um, we've moved on to um, parents and children. And we've taken a look in the scripture at some mighty, mighty, incredible men of God who have real stinkers for kids. Okay? And so this week what I want to do is I want to talk about the responsibilities of parents to their children. And then in upcoming weeks, I'm going to reverse that and talk about responsibilities of children to their parents. Okay? And then after that, we'll, we'll do grandparents and, and some of the other family relationships. So, um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting in verse 4. This is the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as a frontlet between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Now, this right here, according to Jesus, sums up the law and the prophets that you will love God. That's, that's the first. And then he adds to that uh, that you love your neighbor. Okay? And in the midst of this, we have this incredible foundational point on relationship with God, giving us understanding of who he is, but also laying out for us responsibilities. Okay? Um, this, is, this is part of why we are endeavoring to, to memorize scripture. Okay? Um, the sword doesn't do you any good if you don't know how to wield it and you don't have it with you. Okay? So you want to get those scriptures, these passages, soaked into your being. So when the enemy comes against you like he came against Jesus in the wilderness, you can answer him from God's word. Okay? So um, we hear the Shema. And then the commandment. And then he, in verse 7, he says something that's kind of interesting. He says, you shall teach them diligently to your children. Okay. I believe the number one responsibility for parenting your children in that dynamic, that relationship, is to teach them, to train them to expose them to God, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, to the plan from the fall to the restoration, to get them saturated in the teaching of the word so that when their time of challenge comes, they would be able to stand. Okay? Um, number one priority for parents to their children is, is to, to feed their spirit, okay? To feed their soul, to give them what they need to deal with this life, all right? So that's, that's number one goal. I'm gonna break this down in a couple different sections. Um, coming along with that is discipline, okay? Parents are called to discipline their children. I'm gonna hit a couple of these passages real quick if you want me to give them to you after the service, uh, I'll give you a copy of my notes. I'm, I'm not going to have you turn there because we're going to hit these pretty quick. Okay, the first thing I want to say to you is that um, punishment for punishment's sake is abuse. Okay? 
if your child does something that causes you to react negatively and to inflict some kind of harm on them, mentally, verbally, physically, that's abuse. Now, there is a difference. Now, now I've, there are hundreds, there's probably thousands of books that you can read on how to properly parent your children. Um, this is one area that is uh, very, very touchy for most families <clears throat> because nobody wants to hear how their parenting called out. N nobody wants to hear that they might be doing it wrong. You know, uh, and certainly nobody wants to hear that their kids are stinkers. Okay, um, so understand. I, I am not, have not, I've never been a perfect father, okay? But I do have a perfect father, okay? So punishment as part of discipline. Now, I'm going to run through these really quick. Uh, Solomon had a lot to say about this. Uh, I'm not sure he followed his own wisdom because he was one of the men that had a stinker for a son. Um, Proverbs 13, 24. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Proverbs 22, 15. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. <laughs> Proverbs 23, 13 and 14. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you strike him with a rod, he will not die. If you strike him with a rod, you will save his soul from shale. Proverbs 29, verses 15 and 17. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Discipline your son, and he will give you rest. He will give you delight to your heart. By the way, the word for son there uh, is, is used universally for children. Okay, it's like saying mankind. Okay, um, there are so many different views as to how to discipline your children. Okay. Um, scripture talks about using a rod. Uh, my mom used a two-by-four. <laughs> yeah, you guys laughed when you heard that thing whistling through the air. Um, we have the stick. The stick. And we've had the stick since Christopher was about, what, three or four? Except for one year where it mysteriously disappeared, only to be found in his brother's toy box. <laughs> mm -hmm. How did that get in there? <laughs> but we also implement some rules for punishment. Okay? <coughs> the first thing is the stick is kept in the same place and it is not in the room that we are in. Okay? So if the child has done something that deserves a swat on the buttocks, they have to go and get the stick. Okay? And that gives us time to make sure what we're doing is not done out of anger. It's not being done out of reflex. It gives us those few minutes. You know, they say count to 10. That, that usually gives us about a count to 100 because they're not in a hurry to go through the same. <laughs> okay. Um, when they come back, we talk to them about why they are being punished. Okay. What is happening that caused this? What is the behavior they need to modify so that this doesn't have to happen? Okay? And then typically, it's a one-shot squat. Okay? That's, that's pretty much all. The only time I give them more than one is when they dodge. Okay? Or they're stupid enough to put their hand behind their bum. Okay? So, oh, yeah, I'm sorry about your broken hand, but I still got to squat at your butt. Um, no. It would never be that hard, although I think they would disagree with you. <laughs> um, as they got older, our method of discipline had to change. Okay? Um, 
one of the things that uh, Christy did. Now, our children are radically different around me than they are around just Christy. Okay? Um, having four boys, uh, there comes a point in a young man's life when he is feeling the call, the drive, to be established as the head of his own house. Okay? And it's happened with all of our boys. And it's usually between 16 and 18. And they just get this drive that, and, and they start to call into question the head of the house. Okay? And the head of the house does not like to be questioned about being the head of the house. Okay? But when uh, I'm not there, the kids were much more vocal about their opposition to what Christy had told them to do it. Okay? And so what Christy would do they got to the point where they weren't afraid of her shots with the stick. So she had them do push-ups. <laughs> Down, right now. And she stood there and counted them. Because she was reminding them that she's their mother. She is the authority over them. Okay. Other thing that we did is, is when there was any kind of physical altercation, I had a heavy bag. And they would go out and I would make them punch for five minutes. Now, if you have never punched a heavy bag for five minutes, you will learn very quickly that it's not an easy thing to do. Okay? Um, there were other means that we had to discipline them. One of the things that we would do is, hey, look, no phones, no iPads, no computer, no TV, no video games. That's it. And that probably hurt a lot of them a lot more than a SWAT. Okay? Now this is the way we did things. Okay? How you discipline your children really is up to you as long as you are disciplining your children. Now, the discipline has to have a result. If your discipline is not bringing about the result, result, result you desire, it's time to rethink your discipline. Okay? Why do we discipline our children? Just as we learn to love because God loves us, we discipline our children because God disciplines us. Okay? A few more passages I'm going to give you uh, real quick here. Psalm 94, verse 12. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. That was like the worst word you could ever call someone when I was in elementary school. You stupid head. <laughs> I remember being young and my parents, um, you know, we, as we learned words from our friends at school, um, <laughs> You know, I, I had it really easy because I have a brother that's just over a year older than I am and he's a lot more verbal than I was and he picked up the words a lot faster than I did and he was stupid enough to say them in front of mom and dad. Okay, so, so Todd, uh, you know, he, I got wisdom from his mistakes. Okay, evidently we don't say that around mom and dad. Okay. Um, We're going to hit one more passage. Turn in Hebrews, if you would. Hebrews chapter 12. Chapter 12. Um, let's start here in uh, verse 5. <coughs> and have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? This, this, is, this is intended for believers. Okay? One of the things that drives me nuts is when we look at scripture and we try to stick it onto the world. 
that's, that's not how it works. The scripture is for the sons, and, and the Holy Spirit is the one that brings conviction to the world. All we have to do is give what, uh, we take advantage of the opportunity that the Holy Spirit gives us. Okay? Um, so this passage, specifically, it's addressing sons. Again, it's, it's the same use of the word that, that covers children. All right? So women, you are included in this. Um, my son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you left uh, if you are left without discipline, in which you all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness." For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. One of the most, one of the things that scares me the most is this game that every parent that I've ever seen, including myself, uh, plays with their children is that you call them and they laugh and they take off running the other direction. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Until you're in the driveway and they take off toward the street. Okay? In, in so many ways, we allow uh, for behaviors in young children that we would not accept later. And then we've set a double standard because they've been doing this from whenever to whenever, and now all of a sudden, they're not supposed to do it anymore. Okay? Um, God disciplines us because he loves us. We discipline our children because we love them. Okay? Um, I, I don't know how all of you discipline your children. Um, I'm, I'm not calling that into question. Um, I would caution you. Um, children are very quick. They're very smart. If you're in the habit of not disciplining your child in public, guess what lesson they've learned? That it's okay to misbehave in public. And, and your lack of correction is... Um, Confirming that for them, okay? Um, I never cared who was watching. Okay? I don't care. One time, Christy and I were in the drive-thru at a restaurant, and we could see in the window there were three or four teenagers goofing around in the back. Well, Donovan and Christopher were in the back seat, and I don't, I don't know what happened. It was probably one of these things. <laughs> I just picked over something under there. But they started acting up. And, and um, after a little bit, I turned around and I said, Hey! Whoa. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the kids in the back seat. Christy's looking at the kids in the store. I have never seen a sandwich built that good. <laughs> when I coached hockey, uh, I coached Benjamin. Uh, he was the goalie for our team. And he had a really bad habit of standing upright as, as the offense for the other team was coming toward him. Uh, when you play 
goalie, uh, you keep your stick down and you keep your butt down. And he kept standing up and we got scored on. And so as everybody skated back to take the face off, I, I plug your ears. I said, stick down, butt down. Yeah. Every single kid out there. <laughs> the other teams didn't even know what, what was going on. They put their sticks down and they put their ropes down. Okay, you know what? You guys can stay upright. It's him. It's him. Okay. I, I, I've made a lot of mistakes in, in parenting my kids. I'm learning. I'm still learning. Uh, and now it's a whole new generation that, that uh, I, I'm still learning to be a father as my father in heaven is. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to stop here. Um, we will wrap this up next week. I have uh, two more sections to cover. Um, so let's, let's just end there.